welcome my people welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video in today's video i am going to be talking to you about deep foundation design and whenever you hear the term deep foundation one type of foundation system that readily comes to mind is pile foundation and as i've said to you before in a previous video that we generally use or introduce pile foundation where we have soil that gives us very weak bearing capacity where a normal strip foundation or a pad foundation or a raw foundation is not suitable so a pile foundation there are several reasons for introducing pile foundation and two such good reasons are when one or more layers of soil are highly compressible and too weak to support the load transmitted by the superstructure a pile foundation is readily introduced for that system or the recommended choice when subjected by horizontal forces pile foundation resists by bending will still support the vertical load transmitted by the superstructure and when we speak about or uh, when you hear the term lateral it just means horizontal so lateral forces are generally horizontal forces due to seismic action like earthquakes or earth movement so what that statement is saying is that whenever the pile is subjected to horizontal forces so let's say for example this is your pile and when that pile is subjected to horizontal forces like this coming towards the pile the pile still has the capacity to carry the vertical load that the superstructure is going to impose on that pile so that is a benefit and that is why a pile foundation is more safe to earthquake or horizontal forces so your building will come under less stress or you get less damage when you have a pile foundation whenever that 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 foundation system is impacted by an earthquake i'm not saying that you're not going to have damage but a deep foundation deals with earthquake better than a shallow foundation and what you have to realize is that an earthquake carries two centers a earthquake carries the hypocenter and it carries the epicenter the hypocenter is the depth at which the the fault occur below the surface of the ground and the epicenter is where that is where the is where that quake or seismic action impacted the surface of the ground so yes a deep foundation pile foundation does deal with seismic forces or earthquake better than your normal strip foundation or your pad foundation and yes in terms of cost your pile foundation is more expensive than your typical strip or pad or raft foundation in this segment of my presentation i'm going to demonstrate to you how to calculate the allowable capacity of a pile that is 0 0.3 meters in diameter and it is suspended down into the ground or goes down into ground into the ground by 25 meters so the depth is 25 meter and the diameter of the pile is 0 0.3 meters now this pile has a friction capacity of 120 kilopascal it has a tip end bearing capacity of 7.4 kilopascal and we are going to use a factor of safety of 3 and I have already mentioned to you the necessity for using the factor of safety because as, as I said to you before when we calculate the capacity of the pile we are not going to allow the structure 
to carry the same stress as is the pile can carry so we have to establish a factor of safety of three so whatever we calculate for the capacity of the pile we have to divide that by three so it has to prevent the soil beneath the pile from becoming overstressed and can lead to shear failure which can cause sudden collapse so the pile as i've said to you before the capacity of the pile is calculated by the shaft friction and the tip resistance so it is a total of the shaft friction plus the tip resistance so the shaft friction is the opposing force so let's say for argument say the load is going is going is coming down on the pile like this right so the load is pushing down on the pile so the frictional force is a force that is going to oppose the weight of the structure that is coming down so the frictional force is going up and the load or the weight of the structure is going down so the frictional force as you can see these arrows pointing up upwards and the load is pointing downwards and of course the tip resistance is the resistance that is acting against the weights of the structure or the weight of the pile that is or the weight of the structure or the load that is on the pile so the pile capacity as i said to you before is the shaft friction plus your tip resistance and we are going to calculate the allowable capacity this pile can carry now to calculate the shaft friction the shaft friction is going to be the circumference of the pile times the depth of the pile times the friction capacity of the pile so the shaft friction would equal to the circumference of the pile and the circumference this pile has a diameter of 0 0.3 meter so a circumference is pi times diameter pi d and the depth of the pile is 25 meter and the frictional capacity of the pile is 120 kilopascals so 120 K P A. Now, if we should calculate this, so we have pi times the diameter, which is 0 0.3, times 25 meters, times 120 kilopascals, and that works out to be 2827 kilonewtons. So, right there. We have calculated the shaft friction to be 2827, 2827 kilonewtons. How I get kilonewtons? You have to remember that kilopascal is really newton per meter square. And since we have meters, 0 0.3 meters and 25 meters, meter square cancels meter square. So we ended up with kilonewtons. So I'm going to calculate now the tip resistance. So the tip resistance is going to equal to the cross-sectional area of the, of the pile, which is pi d square over 4. That's how we find the area of a circle. So the tip resistance is going to equal to the area the cross-sectional area of the pile at the base, so which is pi d square over 4 times the, 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 the tip end bearing capacity, which is 7.4 kilopascal. And when you do this, this, this calculation, you're supposed to end up with 0 0.52 kilo 
Pascal. No, this is supposed to be, sorry, this is supposed to be kilonewton. Sorry. Kilo newtons. So, therefore, we have calculated the shaft friction and we have calculated the tip resistance. So, remember now the shaft, the pile capacity is the shaft friction plus the tip resistance. So, the capacity of pile, the capacity. Is going to equal to 2827 kilonewtons plus 0 0.52 kilonewtons, which equal to 2827.52 kilonewtons. So the capacity of a pile. This pile can carry a, a load of 2,827.52 kilonewtons. Or you, we can round this up to 2828 kilonewtons. Right? But you have to take into consideration that we are establishing a factor of safety of 3. And remember what I have said earlier that even though we know that the pile can carry this amount of, 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 of load, we are not going to let the pile sub, be subjected to this amount. We're going to have to establish a factor of safety of three. And by doing that, we have to divide this total by three. So the, 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 the allowable... Capacity of pile is going to equal to two eight two eight kilonewtons divided by three, and that works out to be nine hundred and forty three kilonewtons. So we are going to allow this pile to carry 943 kilonewtons, even though we know that it can carry 2828 kilonewtons. So the allowable load that we're going to allow this pile to carry is going to equal to 943 kilonewtons. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoy the video. If you have any question, just shoot me a comment and ask me a question. And I will be more than happy to get back to you with an answer. So, if you're watching my channel for the first time, remember to subscribe to my regular viewers and subscribers you know what to do already thank you and i will catch you in another video upload enough respect take it easy